Just give me a flyby. Hold on. I'm trying something out with this. One, return to formation. <laughs> I was like how you should give me a flyby. You're like, hold on, I'm trying something with this. I could not hold on any longer. Hey there, YouTube. This is Ink Raven. Today, I'm going to go over on how to set up an Arma 3 dedicated server. You'll need a few things before we get started. First, you will need to find an Arma 3 server, and two, you must own a copy of Arma 3 via Steam. I won't recommend any place that actually has Arma 3 servers, however, I recommend Google searching. Depending on the size of your clan is really what you want to get. If you're just a five-man team just starting off, I recommend looking into server slots. If you're already a large established clan, I recommend going and getting a full dedicated server to suit over 100 members. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to need to grab the re required tools. Obviously, your computer should be a Windows computer. You can use a Linux computer for your server or a Windows computer. For this process, I'm not familiar with the Linux system, but I do know the Windows system. So if you want to follow my instructions, I recommend having a Windows box. With that out of the way, go ahead to armaholic.com. Once there, look for the Trophies Arma Dedicated Server Tool, or TADST. The TADST is the tool that Sitcom currently uses to monitor their servers. It's a great tool and we recommend it greatly. Once you've got this tool, what we want to do is upload it onto a server. The way to connect to your server is a program called Remote Desktop Connection. What you want to go ahead and do is go to Start, and then here in the search bar, type in the words Remote Desktop. Once there, you should see the program Remote Desktop Connection. Go ahead and launch it. You'll see the window pops up that says Remote Desktop Connection and Computer Name. Currently, you'll see that ours is blocked out because I don't want to give out our IP. However, from there, you can type in the IP address to your server. This would have been emailed, you, emailed to you with the instructions when you order the server. There should also be a login with the username and password. Once you've entered the username and password they've given you and the IP address, simply click connect. Alright guys, once you're connected to your remote desktop, you should see something somewhat similar to this, but a little bit different. Let's go ahead and upload the Arma TADST file. Or you can simply re-download it again via your desktop. Server desktop. Alright, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and open it. Once you've opened the zip file, there will be a folder. Inside it will be the tadst.exe file. This is the only file you definitely need. I recommend taking the readme with me just so you don't lose it. Now that you have that file, let's locate the Arma 3 directory. Simply go to My Computer, C Drive, Program Files, x86, Steam, then here go to Steam Apps, Common, Arma 3. Once you're in Arma 3, what you want to do is drag the, the TAD ST into the Arma 3 directory. Simply drag it. That's all you have to do. You won't be prompted. Um, just simply move it over. I, however, already have a version and it's already set up, so I'm not going to replace it. Now that you've done that, all you have to do is launch it. When you launch the program, you should see a screen that looks like this. Let's first go through server details. The very first thing you're going to notice is server name. This is how everyone sees the host on the multiplayer screen of Arma. So it's very important that you set it up with your clan's tags. For right now, I put the example of our current domain name, which is sitcomarma.com. The box right underneath it is password. This password is used for people connecting to your server. So if you want to do a clan only or just have a few friends online, you can go ahead and assign a password to it. And that way only people who know the password or are really good at guessing will be able to connect to it. Directly underneath that is the admin password. This gives you admin status on the server. So you'll be able to ban, kick, and set preferences for the map you're on. Port number, Steam port, max players, and Steam quarry port. These are fairly important things but let's only cover port and max players. Max players can choose how many people join the map. Um, it depends on player slots and your server's capability. So I recommend setting it to about 60 on average, depending on the power of your server or if you have limitations. Your port number is very important. 
If you look down here, you'll see that we actually have several servers up. And they all run on different port numbers. The way it works is for every new server you run, simply add 12. I'll go over that with a little bit more clarity in a moment, but let's go through the rest of the options. As you can see, there's almost nothing else going on in these boxes. We don't really need to worry about them, and to be very honest, I don't know what they do. But right over here, you'll see Persistent Battlefield, Battle Eye. What Persistent Battlefield is, is a world that doesn't require players in it, and the computer will still process enemy movements. Um, it's kind of like for if you've played Domination, Insurgency, or even DayZ. You want to make sure that that's selected, that way the mission doesn't end. Battle Eye is an anti-cheat tool that uses Argon. Um, it's a very great tool. I won't go over how to set it up or how to operate it, but I recommend looking up on other tutorials on how to do that. I might cover it at a later time. The next is Voice Over Net. What this is, is Voice Over Net. This is how you can talk to each other in-game. Our clan uses a mod called Advanced Combat Radio Environment, Acre. So we do not allow people to talk on our server, but they can speak through TeamSpeak. So we have ours disabled. So if you're planning on using Acre, I recommend making sure that this is selected. Me following that is server rules. Voting enabled pretty much means that people are allowed to vote map switches, vote players off. It just gives people a little bit more control. It's democracy of ways. Missions. I think this one's a little bit self-explanatory. This is where you can select the missions that you have on your dedicated server. As you can see, we only have one Arma 3 mission, and that's Bob's Armory. Thanks, Bob. Hey there, I forgot to catch this while I was recording it, but I want to go ahead and add a little bit of feedback in here. Um, if you go into your Arma 3 directory, you'll see a folder called MP Missions. If you download a mission, all you have to do is simply add it into um, the MP Missions folder, restart TAD ST, and then you'll see that it shows up in the MP Missions. I do apologize about not mentioning that in the video, but I did want to edit it before I rendered it. Following that is your mods tab. You may notice that Acre's not on here because at this current time, which is September 18th, 2013, I do think so, is it? Acre has yet to come out. These rest of these settings I kind of leave at default, but you can really go into them. Um, these are pretty self-explanatory, and also if you don't know what they are, you can actually hover your mouse over them and it normally tells you, but these are pretty self-explanatory. Performance and server scripts I recommend leaving alone unless there's an issue. Understand that's more technical support, and I'm not going to be able to help you on that. Alright guys, let's go ahead and go back to what we were talking about. Um, if you remember, I talked about the port number. Now, down here, you're going to see a few servers that are up right now. These are some of our Arma 2 servers. And I specified this one because it's fairly important. This server is currently is se separated like a box, for lack of a better term. So you'll see that it says up here that it's on port 2302. Well, because this is on 2302, I can't use that port number again without shutting the server down. So what you want to do to make a new server is simply go here and add 12 to it. So it's now 2314. I can now launch the game and it'll act like it's a completely independent server from the original. How do you launch it? Pretty simple. Simply click launch. Now, if you really enjoyed your setups and don't feel like setting them up again, you can see here is a profile setting. So you can click save, and then every time you log in, these settings will always be the same. You can also create other ones and by clicking new and giving them a name. By the way, whenever you launch the server, you're going to see this little text box pop up. Understand this just shows you the status of the server, people connecting to it, what they're saying, but understand this gives you no physical control over the server. You're going to need bad live if you want to ban people, kick people, or anything else like that. So I recommend getting bad live and understanding how to work it. Alright guys, I think I covered the basics. Understand I am in no ways a server expert or have any affiliation with this mod. So I won't be able to help you too much, but there might be a few things I know are left out. So feel free to shoot a comment below if you're confused about anything. If not, you can always say I'm doing a good job. That boosts my ego. Well, gentlemen, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit a like. If you enjoy all my videos, hit subscribe. But most of all, I hope you see us on our servers sometime soon so we can try shooting at each other.